Hi guys, Justin Tucker here again. In this video tutorial we're going to cover in our uh, mock website here going over user roles and permissions. In the last video we went over user roles. In this video we're going to go over defining user permissions. And uh, as I stated, this is uh, I made this a separate video because you see all these checkboxes. Um, in theory, you kind of want to give attention to each and every one of these and kind of go line by line and ask yourself, for example, administer the IMCE. If you remember in another video the IMCE, and I just randomly grabbed this this item here, um, it was responsible for helping us get a button to browse our local machine to upload images into our server without uh, needing to use FTP or anything else too crazy. So this is saying administer the IMCE, and it gives you a warning here. So Drupal's nice to let you say, hey, if you, whoever you allow to do this, you need to trust it in essence, okay? I'll give it to trusted user roles only, or roles only. Um, <clears throat> and so the question is, do I want an anonymous user to be able to administer my IMCE? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> do I want an authenticated user? Maybe, maybe not. Do I want a developer or a client to be able to administer it? Probably not. Um, if I do make use of this role administrator that comes with Drupal, you can... Uh, adjust this of course. Maybe I do want a trusted member of my organization to um, administer that. Maybe I don't. Okay, so it's really a yes-no question. So one module that I don't have in load or, uh, installed right now but wanted to bring to your attention, if you want to uh, make it easier to navigate through your permissions area, there's a cool module called uh, uh, Permissions Filter. or filter permissions, excuse me. And we'll just go through our standard module install steps. Go to modules. Install new module. Paste that URL. Hit install. In past videos, I've gotten a red box saying, hey, you've already got this installed. If you don't have a module installed, it takes you here. And you can either go to your administration pages or enable newly added modules, which we want to do. and I'm going to save this and before I do save it I'm going to open it open it in another tab <clears throat> what the permission page looks like now okay and if you see it's this big long one one page deal when I activate this module and we go back to the permissions page and I reload you'll notice it gives me these filters okay and all my page went away so to get that page back you just simply choose all roles all modules and then voila here we go however this is a really fun tool I found if you need to say hey I just need to know what's going on with the administrator permission concerning I don't know, taxonomy terms. And there we go. Now we just have a very condensed page of only, not only that permission for that role, but for that, uh, you know, component of the website. In this case, we're talking about taxonomy, which we learned earlier is nothing more than categories. Okay. So we're not going to do that. Um, for this video, we're just going to kind of look at the master page and go down the list. Um, I'm not going to go over every single line. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll go over several, but uh, you know it's basic stuff. So administer blocks. Who do I want to do that? Uh, nobody else but an administrator. So a lot of this stuff. Anytime you see the word administer, okay, usually that means do you want to allow someone access to this configuration page that I'm opening in a new window, um, and be able to change how certain modules and certain features of your website actually behave and work. So typically, administer uh, permissions you reserve for very, very trusted people in very trusted roles. Okay, so a lot of these we're going to leave the same. Um, let's look at comment real quick. Administer comments and comment settings. Again, don't really want that to uh, be something anyone can do. However, view comments. Sure, we'll let anonymous users view comments on this site. I don't think we're making use of comments, but <clears throat> so I mean, clearly, if if every content type and the comment section was told told to be closed 
just because you have view comments here doesn't mean that someone can then somehow use comments. Um, so this is kind of a moot point right now, that whether we leave it active or not, because uh, we're not using comments, so therefore that you, there's none to view, even though you have permission to. Um, post comments. Uh, if you were to click that and not have any spam tool like uh, Molom, M-O-L-L-O-M, um, you're going to get just a ton of spam. Because what you just did is you said, I would like to allow anybody who's not logged in or does not have a user, user account with the website to be able to put stuff on my website. And spam bots will find that and put stuff on your website. Skip comment approval. Um, even though you may have this checked, what's going to do is all the spam comments that come in, if you don't protect your form, uh, get shoved into a approval queue. And... Um, you have to approve those. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your site showing the spam, but you will get a really cluttered back end if you don't have some protection. If you were to do this, okay, then clearly spam bots can post comments and there is nothing stopping them. So that's why those are not done. We're requiring a user to log in if they want to post and skip comments. Again, we're not using comments, but that's how that kind of comes. Um, just going down, again, you can read each one of these. Um, the develop module, again, a lot of these are just fine, meaning what an anonymous user can do um, is going to be pretty limited, typically. However, what your other user roles can do, namely client, developer, and administrator, uh, they'll be able to do more, of course. So going down, um, this is an important one, view published content. So if I were to uncheck that, uh, anybody logged out of the website would not be able to see anything. They'd basically get an access denied, or depending on how you have your site set up, you may take them to a contact form or a registration form. This is really good for sites that um, are intranets or members-only type thing, where, you know, uh, there isn't even a home page that we're letting you see. I mean, every bit of this site you have to log in to see. Otherwise, you want to check this so that basic page and information um, can be presented to non-logged in users. But uh, under the node section here, okay, is kind of where some of these permissions are going to be relevant for our little example we're, we're doing here. So let's go down the road here. <coughs> um, bypass content access control, again, administer, administer. We uh, don't want to let anybody do that but the administrator. Access the content overview page, same thing. View published content, we want everybody to view published content. View own published content. Um, sure, why not? But I want to let a developer and a client be able to see their own published content. View content revisions. Um, Drupal's got the ability to, when you save a new page, you can check a box in uh, one of the bottom uh, menu options that says do you, you know revision and if you check that there's a little log message you can give when you hit save and that's checked it actually saves a copy of the old page and then a copy of the new page so that's a great way to preserve pages um, and then be able to go back and say okay how many times has this been saved how many revisions of this page are there and this is asking what role do you want to be allowed to see those revisions we're not really making use of them so we'll ignore that <coughs> Delete content revisions. Okay, and here we go. Uh, article, create a new account, edit own. I'm sorry, create new content, edit own content, edit any content, delete own content, delete any content. So basically, you've got five things to do with each content type. Create, edit own, edit any, delete own, delete any. Okay. Um, we don't <coughs> really need anybody to create articles. However, here's bid submission. We do need uh, to pe allow people to create a bid submission. So this would be a content type that would be uh, attached to a project submission, and it would be a developer or development company saying, hey, you know, we can do the project for this amount of money in this amount of time. Um, so we do want a developer to create a new bid submission, um, but not, not necessarily a client. Edit own content. Um, the question here is, do we want the developer to be able to go back into his bid and be able to uh, change that? Mm. For now, I'm going to say probably not. 
edit any content. Um, I'll give that to my administrator. I'll give these other two as well to him. But uh, I, I don't want, of course, any other role to edit any content for the bid submission content type. Delete own content. Uh, once the bid's made, can the developer delete it? Basically take it back. Um, we'll go ahead and say yes to that. <coughs> uh, bid submission delete any content. Kind of like edit any content. I don't really want anybody else to do that other than an administrator of the site. And then we're going to do this for jobs available, jobs wanted, postings, and then project submissions. So jobs available postings. Uh, we'll let developers post those. We will let them edit their own content. We won't let them edit any. We'll let them delete their own content. And uh, for a jobs wanted posting, again, a developer can be uh, a developer looking for work or a company looking for a developer to work for them. So yeah, we'll let a developer create a new jobs wanted posting and we'll allow them to edit their own and we'll allow them to delete their own. And when we come down here to project submission, oh, let me go ahead and give my admin permissions here. And then finally on our uh, <coughs> project submission, do we want uh, clients? We know we want to be able to create that. Um, I guess we can allow a developer to create that because uh, you could have the scenario where a developer has a project but they need some help or want to collaborate with somebody else and so they may offer a project submission to the website that we're doing here. Um, we'll allow them to edit their own and we'll allow them to delete their own. We'll give admin everything. And then you kind of want to repeat the process going down here. Uh, under search, I usually like to let <laughs> allow anonymous users use the search. We'll go ahead and say uh, authenticated users can as well. Use advanced search. I don't think it's relevant here. System shortcut. Again, under system, you'll see a lot of administer. So again, this is obviously something you want to keep protected. Taxonomy terms. Um, User, view user profiles. I'm going to say yes to this across the board because the whole idea of this mock site is for, is to kind of be a community site based around, you know, uh, developers, website developers, you know, kind of the world that I'm in. Um, you know, it's easy for me to conjure up something to, uh, to build a site around example-wise. But, you know, I want it to be community. I want it to be people connecting with people. And so, sure, let's let everybody see uh, everybody else's user profiles. Um, change own username, sure. I'll give that to, uh, of course, authenticated users. Anonymous users don't really have a username. Um, cancel own user account, sure. If you want to leave, we'll let you. Um, select method for canceling account. Uh, we're not going to allow them to do that. If you want to cancel, you cancel. And so that's kind of the task and the chore that you want to do. Now, when you fill these boxes out based on asking questions, do I want this role to be able to do this thing here, yes or no. Um, you notice that this is kind of helping mold the workflow and what the users are going to experience. So here in a moment, we we need to address the obvious issue of, uh, you know, when you sign up for the website, <clears throat> how do we know that you're going to be a developer or you're going to be a client? Or is it okay to be both? You know, that's another question to ask yourself. So, you know, there's really no right or wrong in doing this, but there is certainly a, 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 a good way and a better way. And so, again, trying to think ahead as to what you're going to need and, you know, ask yourself these questions help you uh, go the better path. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up with that. That is permissions. Um, this is how you administer them. Again, I think the permissions filter module is cool, especially if you get a very large site. You're going to have this left-hand side here really blow up with a lot of other uh, permissions you could address potentially because of the other features you've added to your site. And the uh, permissions filter helps with that. We'll go ahead and save these. And, uh, you know, naturally you can probably find yourself coming back here several times because even though we set these permissions, okay, kind of the next step we're going to have to perform at some point is pretend that we're a developer, log in and see the experience we get. Or pretend we're a client, log in as a client and see 
the experience we get. Uh, clearly, we're going to need to make menus that allow the developer to create the content we said he could create, and we're going to have to do that for clients as well and allow them to create that content. And then we may need to make a decision. Can you be a client and a developer? Um, so, you know, just, just, just some stuff to think about. And again, it probably doesn't really matter which way you go, but uh, those are those are good logical questions that you need to address. So, um, as always, if you like these videos, subscribe. It lets me know to make more. If you guys have any comments or uh, suggestions, I am always open to feedback. And as always, if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, to give me a buzz, and I will help out where I can. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next video.